This is the so-called Golden Gate. And this is the original one, not the one in Frisco. <laughs> I mean it. Uh, in any case, uh, this is one of the most magnificent buildings on the Temple Mount. Uh, the inside of it is beautifully decorated uh, with uh, uh, sculptured capitals and pillars and uh, the gate itself is blocked on the outside. Uh, the blocking of the gate is uh, medieval. Uh, that is mainly because of the Christian and Jewish tradition that the second coming or the coming of the Messiah would be through this gate. The Muslims didn't want the Messiah of the Jews or the second coming of Jesus, they didn't want it and therefore they blocked the gate. The gate uh, is uh, disputed in uh, literary sources and modern uh, scholarly literature as to its date. It seems that it is Byzantine in date, though some Israeli scholars, especially Miriam Ayalon, uh, a scholar of the Hebrew University, uh, who was also my teacher, uh, Professor Miriam Ayalon, she thinks that it is early Islamic in date. In any case, the building uh, uh, is uh, worth uh, looking at, uh, at the details of it. Uh, two uh, very important things. One is the level of the gate. The level is uh, about 10 meters lower than the, the level surrounding it in the Temple Mount. This marks the original level of uh, the eastern part of Temple Mount in uh, up till uh, medieval times. We have some drawings made by pilgrims who came here in the uh, 15th century, in the early 16th century, uh, showing a very steep slope going down in this area. A second thing which is worth mentioning is the <coughs> collection of uh, uh, which is covered up there with the uh, uh, plastic, black colored plastic. Uh, these are the leftovers of the wooden beams which were kept uh, underneath the Al-Aqsa Mosque and they originate from the ceiling of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. These uh, wooden, uh, <coughs> wooden beams, uh, they were dismantled in the 1920s. In the uh, uh, 1940s, uh, some of them were removed to the Rockefeller Museum, especially the uh, more, uh, uh, more uh, artistic ones, which have a, uh, a museum appearance. Uh, some others were taken to, into the Islamic Museum of the Temple Mount. Some others were stored in the different tunnels underneath the Al-Aqsa Mosque, uh, the tunnels of the double gate and the triple gate. From there, in the 1990s, they were removed and were exposed to the elements on the outside in, in uh, the southern part of Temple Mount. During that time, about half of them disappeared. Uh, some of them were sold to uh, Armenian uh, uh, wood, uh, wood uh, uh, merchants and some of them found their way into one of the settlements in uh, the land of Benjamin where from uh, some of them were stolen and burned up by some kids. Uh, in the 1970s it was a professor of botanics of Tel Aviv University, uh, Ms. Uh, Nili Lipschitz, who took some of the beans and had some uh, C14 checks on them, and she found out that some of the beans are cedar of Lebanon, some of them are uh, cypress trees, some of them date back to the first temple period, some others to later periods. In any case, still later, one member of the Temple Man Sifting Project uh, who is currently working on a doctoral thesis on the wood from inside the Temple Man uh, found that one of those wooden beams has uh, carvings upon it which are typical to the late Roman period. So it is part of a uh, uh, probably a shrine 
pagan shrine of uh, the days of Adrian, maybe the shrine of Jupiter Capitolinus, uh, the uh, uh, god of the Capitolian trinity. Now this, this wood is of utmost importance, uh, unfortunately it is again a matter of politics and therefore it is exposed to the elements here and not in any museum. Uh, they do not allow uh, to, uh, to do uh, archaeological checkings in these uh, pieces of wood which would be of uh, great importance. Mm -hmm.